we didn't get to come up with a game plan, but I definitely think it will be down to Tony and I in the end. And I know that he'll give it to me. I'm not getting up. What? I don't know what gen we in. Oh my God, these young mother freakers, boy. Personally, I'm convinced that Uma is the, is the mole because her gameplay is very weak. It's very weak. You can tell she's got a lot of tells that if you study her, you could easily figure her out to be the mole. If she's not the mole, then her gameplay is weak, very weak. And then the audacity for Tony and Hannah to flirt while they're losing over 30 something thousand dollars does not make sense to me. It doesn't make sense that you'd flirt over losing so much money. That means a lot to a number of people just because, you know, you want to be the winner. Make that make sense. Anyway, I digress. Hey there. Thanks for stopping by. It's your girl, Valerie. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Click the like button, turn on the notification bell for when I upload new videos and definitely leave a comment. In this episode, I'll be reviewing The Mole Season 2, Episode 2. So I'm devastated. I am devastated is an understatement because I don't think Jennifer deserved to go home first. I really don't. I think there are other people in the group that are sort of background characters that could have easily gone home. And so for her to be sent home, I think she would have brought a lot of energy and should have brought a lot a different dynamic, especially with her friendship with Tony. Um, so I'm so devastated that she's gone home. Um, so they then are sent on their next task which is sort of like a treasure hunt so there's treasure buried in the sea and then there's treasure whereby they have to walk around the little island Tommen island to find it and because they have to build a raft as well to carry the treasure once they find the treasure um they decide to split into three groups so the first group that goes to look for the uh, team rock are q nesh and Tony, which makes sense because it needed a lot of walking, climbing, lifting, carrying, and they are the muscle of the group. So it, and they, the younger men in the group. So it made more sense. Um, I'm a bit curious as to why Nish is sort of wanting to be the task manager all the time, or maybe he would rather have his fate in his own hands. So run everything and make sure that no one sort of sabotages them, but then still at the same time, he can't be in all places at the same time. And this is going to make him a target. Yes, people can't vote him out, but if he makes the slightest mistake, he could go home. But at the same time, if he is the mole, he could get a lot of people sent, sent home because they wouldn't suspect him and they would end up, you know, being wrong. Um, Team Raft, while well, building the raft, we have Sean, Andy, De Deanna and Muna. It makes sense. It makes sense because Moana, I don't think would have wanted to go into the water. Dina and Andy are the least sort of fit people in the group. And I'm surprised that Sean stayed the or stayed out though. But then maybe he's the manpower, so they needed him to stay to build the sh the, the raft. And then Team Shipwreck, they went. They sent their strongest swimmers, I assume. So you have Hannah, Melissa, Michael, and Ryan. I what do I think? I think at times, yes, Tony is, is right to say they are overthinking some of the stuff because, like the boys that went on Team Rock, were now already counting on the beach, and they had to find out that no, they can actually go into the island, in, deeper into the island, and sort of see if they can find you know the the treasure that's buried there. Um, and with Muna, Muna is the mall. Muna is the mall. If she's not a mall, um, I don't know what she's doing then. Her gameplay is whack because she, she, she sabotaged the money game. And then she, now they're building a raft and you have Andy saying, okay, let's build a bigger raft whereby we have the, the, the sort of the bamboo in the middle. And then the end bits, we also tie the, the, the the drums which made sense in my opinion which made sense in my opinion but for Muna to tell them to cut no let's just cut it's okay where it is let's keep the, the drums as they are and it's like uh... and then she looks sideways so I don't know whether she was looking at the producers maybe maybe the producers were, si were giving a signal that you're overdoing it calm down sort of play a background role otherwise they're going to find you out I don't know but I'm very suspicious if I had to say who's my mole at the moment I would say it's either Nesh because of how he's in control of everything else so that people don't suspect him or it's Muna Muna is my number one followed by Michael followed by Michael Looking at the tasks and how they allocated the tasks, for me, I'm starting to think Nish might not be the mole. I think it's just someone who likes control because, yeah, they had the strongest guys, which made sense because they could have easily sabotaged and sort of sent someone like, you know, like Michael to go on this trail. But 
they they got lost. They they missed a clue that had markings on it in chalk. So which meant they went past and they went the wrong way. And then they had to come back because Tony was about was complaining that no we're just going around in circles we need to do better we need to do better and because they were very competitive guys they were able to come uh, to sort of retrace their 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 track and then they eventually found the rock with the five markings four markings three markings two markings one and until they found the spot where team rock was supposed to find their treasure but then when they got there they were overthinking it the, this is nish's problem he overthinks a lot of things he needs to just calm down and just do the basics because eventually uh you had q finally see that actually the treasure was hanging in the rope on the tree not the the little cans that of food that they were opening which appeared to be rotten and stuff so they got part of the clue and then team team raft was still struggling i feel like muna to some extent is the mole because she decided how big the rafter was going to be. She is very suspicious because of the way she keeps looking around as though she's looking to someone to signal her what to do or where to go. It seems like maybe she's overplayed her hand and the producers have called her out on it. And this is why she's overthinking everything she does. Uh, with Michael, I'm suspicious because he went to pick up the first aid box and then he dropped it and it went even further down and you had Ryan struggling because she's quite short so she couldn't go very deep. Obviously, she would need an oxygen mask or something and all they had were the snorkeling goggles. So they kept trying and trying and trying until eventually Michael went down, picked up the box of treasure and then somebody met him halfway down. That was very smart. Met him halfway down and then carried it to the top which made sense because the two other girls hannah and melissa were struggling to go even down as far as the boat at least ryan was, go was able to go to the boat the other two girls were struggling they got their half the boys got their half and then they realized that they all they needed was to take the original map fold it into uh, and then x where it marked the spot that's where their clue was they found these two massive 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 treasure boxes that they needed to put on a raft and so they carried their raft I don't know how they tied that raft. It was simple. They should have just tied knots at where the, the, the bamboo was joining. They didn't need to thread it and whatever else they were doing. I think they overplayed their hand. And I'm actually pleasantly surprised that the raft actually made it to the buoy because once that was done, they got their treasure onto the buoy and they sort of got the weaker people, more or less, to sort of swim out. So they had, you know, Diana swim out. They had Andy swim out. Um, and then the rest, the younger people stayed behind. So you had the three guys with Michael and Sean sort of now navigate with a couple of the girls. I think Ryan was there sort of navigating the the, the raft to the, to the buoy and sorry, my words are missing me. Um, and then while they're on their way, one of the drums came off and Ryan was saying, I suspect Michael. And it's like, if it's Michael, then Michael is the mole because this is the second time Michael and uh, Mona, if they're not the mole, they're not made for this game. Sadly, they're not. They need to go to Survivor and try their shot. They're all big brother. This ain't it for them because they've got a lot of tells that if you study them, you'll be able to fish them out as, as the mole. Anyway, they were able to release the, the, the sort of the firework or whatever to say that they had found it. And Ari acknowledged that they had found it. So they, they were sent a boat and then they were told you can go out and relax and enjoy yourselves. One of the many things I like about the mall is that no one can vote the other person out. It's your answers at the end of the day at the quiz that determine whether or not you go home. So that bit I love because you can't play any games or whatever. You can sabotage people, but you can't really sort of play mind games and sort of get rid of the person you want. Anyway, Ari comes out and he says, okay. I've got an exemption card. So in order to win the exemption card, which means you're exempted from the quiz, you I'm going to run the clock. The last person seated is the person who's going to win the clock. And it's like, uh, okay, uh, so let's go. And automatically when it starts, because they didn't get time to sort of strategize, everybody's looking out for themselves. Everybody wants the money. And so they're sort of questioning each other. Who's going to leave? Who wants the money? What shall we do? So you have Melissa stand up and say, I volunteered Nesh to sort of be our scapegoat in the first challenge, to be our leader. So because I did that, I'm happy to stand up and give away my opportunity to win the exemption card if, you know, we give it to Nash. And so she stands up and she walks off. And then 
it now becomes a matter of does everybody else stand up or is everybody else willing to run the clock out? And obviously the mole is within the group. And I think Melissa did this because she wanted to win Nash's trust. And in so doing, she sort of gave up and said, okay, fine, I'll throw myself at the mercy of the quiz and you can take the exemption. But then you have the likes of Tony saying no, I want the exemption card as well. I'm willing to run the clock to zero. I will not stand up because I deserve the same opportunity as everybody else. And it's like, well, but you didn't offer yourself to be the scapegoat in episode one. So why then do you feel you deserve to to win the prize? It didn't make sense. You have Dion say, okay, fine, I'm, I'm standing up. I'm done. I can't continue to sit here and watch this clock run because now it's 30 something left, 37 thousand left because they started off at 45. And then you have Mona trying to guilt people and saying, oh, my parents are immigrants. You know, they came from Somalia. They were refugees, blah, blah. She's trying to play on people's heartstrings and people didn't budge. People didn't bite because they're like, no, nah, we're not just going to give it to you just because of your family's history. Q was fired up. Q was fired up because this is a lot of money to see the clock continue to run down and nobody want to stand up and nobody want to volunteer to say, okay, fine, let's allow so-and-so to have this opportunity. I feel like, yes, Melissa, it was strategy on her part, but it made more sense because they all made Nesh the scapegoat in episode one when they made him the, the leader or the team leader. So they owe him this much to allow him to sort of sit there and enjoy the game. And so for everyone to refuse to allow him to enjoy the game, I didn't get it, but they were willing to scapegoat him. And then you have Hannah calling out, well, I am willing to run out the clock as well. I'm willing to run out the clock. And it's like, why? Why are you two so willing to do that? And so Nesh in the end just said, okay, fine, I'm out. I'll take myself out and leave you people since you want to run out the clock. And it's like people that did the least to win the money, because at the end of the day, in episode one, Nesh ran the challenge. He was sort of in control of it. In episode two, he still did the same thing. And yet people who were in the background, who barely could sink to the bottom of the ocean to pick up the money, were the ones that that want the exemption card. And it's like, make it make sense. Make it make sense. Q eventually lost his rag. And so he, he stormed off. He was the fourth person to storm off. And it's like, oh my God, people are really getting upset here. They are really sort of losing their crap. And Tony is sitting there like Dr. Evil. And it's like, why are you doing this? Why are you taunting people? Because yes, you don't want money. Fine. Other people want the money because Q was right to say, I came to win the money. I didn't just come to win. Without the money, you can't win. So in order to get the money, you need to win. And so you then had Andy walk off. You had um, Sean walk off. And it's like, please, people, just stand up. Just stand up. What's the point? Michael decided to storm off and then he left four. So he left Ryan, Muna and uh, Hannah and Tony. And eventually Muna felt guilty, I think, because people kept talking and kept talking. Or maybe the producers gave her a signal to say, okay, they've lost half of it. It's okay. You can go now. So she stood up. Then you had Ryan realize that she wasn't going anywhere. She stood up. And Tony's being a jackass and he's saying, I'm willing to run the clock out. I'm willing... I think it's just bravado. I think he knows he's not the mole. And I think he knows even if people vote for him, they will be sent home because he is not the mole. And so you end up having him and Hannah be the last two left standing. And it's less than 20,000. And it's like, you people have seriously lost above 25K just because of your pride and your ego. Make that make sense. Make that make sense. I didn't get it. And for Hannah to say, oh, I always get what I want. And she starts flirting. And it's like, seriously, you're flirting because of money. You're flirting because of money. Why not run the same code that you ran the first time? And hopefully you stay on the show. Well, I guess she's a poker player. So, you know, to her, it's just a game. So she doesn't care how much they lose. But anyway, I digress. Um, thanks, guys, for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And click the link in my video to watch my review from episode one. Bye, guys.